here in a moment too. Oh, hey, Facebook. <laughs> what's up? What's up, Facebook people? Give it a moment to let it set in, let people jump on here. We got, I'm also monitoring from the phone. There's still Moss. Hey, how's it going? What's going on? How you doing? I'm all right. <laughs> Recovering a little bit from some allergies and such. Oh, yeah. Are we live how's yet? It, or not? How's yeah, it? We're yep, we're live. We're live. We're just giving it a moment. Yeah. People are jumping on right here. We have about 22 people joining us right now. Give it a little bit of time before we get things started. This is, how's, the, how's the weather back home? Oh, it's uh, rainy. It's nice. It's raining was, finally. Yeah, oh, and I was uh, this morning. I was uh, very early in the morning. I was near uh, Bavdag, and it was mm. it was just it was, it was just beautiful. Yeah. Oh, good. A lot of people good. were outside and running, working out. Yeah, yeah. I was watching the um, weather forecast when we left town. We left like over a week ago. Now I was watching the weather forecast, and I did see that there was rain. Um, you know, coming up, and so I've just been kind of monitoring. But you know, sometimes it, the weather forecast will, will forecast yeah. rain, but it doesn't really like you know, it's it doesn't tell you the degree to how much rain, you know. And I see my dad posting about it too that it was getting some rain, which is really good because, as we know, there's the big drought happening, yeah, exactly. So it's gonna be a good one like, for you when you get back, yeah. Oh, yeah, we can't, we look forward to that. Hey, Josh, so baby. Some, <laughs> So we have some people jumping on right here, so we'll go ahead and get started. And um, awesome. I want to just start off by doing a short giving of thanks and uh, giving thanks to not think I'm a great creator for, for this life that we all have, that we are grateful we are walking this world together during this time, during this era. Uh, it's two-legged beings, and we give thanks for that. And we give thanks for our Mother Earth and Jivutka that we all walk upon. That she provides a place for all living beings to live. We give thanks to Tashtono, like the sunlight that came up over the horizon today to bring blessings to the land. And we give thanks to also Ahovut, wind, air, that, that we all breathe, that's all around us all the time, that without it, all living things on this earth would cease to exist. So we give thanks to Ahovut, air, wind, for coming into our bodies and oxygenating us and um, and for it to provide life for all things. We also give thanks to Shudak water that, that we drink daily, that's in our bodies, that's on our earth, that is a vital part of all living things. We give thanks to Shudak Mani, Nibi, Oneganos, Ni, uh, water, to, water that's so sacred to all of us. And, um, we also give thanks to um, fire, Nada, that uh, keeps us warm, that cooks our food. Um, that brings uh, blessings to us on daily. And we give thanks to all of the uh, four-legged, the haichidokam, the winged, the, the finned, the, the insects, the small organisms, all the other living beings that we share this world with. And we give thanks that they, that are continuing to be on the land there and continuing to uh, go about their ways in which uh, they were given in the beginning of creation. We give thanks because they bring balance to our world, our ecosystem. And we give thanks, of course, to our, our, our grandmother moon, grandfather sun, uh, our ancestor stars out there, um, everything in our universe and our world. We give thanks, of course, to our ancestors that walked before us, that paved the way for us, our recent relatives, our recent ancestors that paved the way for us, all the elders and the knowledge keepers that are currently existing in our communities. We give thanks to them. We give thanks to all the mothers right now, all the mothers that are caring. And uh, we paved the way here for the young ones to come into our world to bring blessings and give thanks to all the babies out there, all the sacred children and the babies that are bringing blessings and teachings to each and every one of us. And we give thanks to all the fathers out there, the grandmas and the grandpas, the aunties and the uncles, all the people in the community that play a role in bringing up children and raising children. And we give thanks to um, those that all have walked here before us and that are existing here and now. We also put our hearts and minds together 
um, to send out to all of our relatives in the seven directions that need some love at this time. They need to, their, their spirit and their mind, their body need to be configured and brought, brought up. And um, those that are struggling with something, some, some sort of issue that we're sending our love their way. And uh, we give thanks to everyone that had uh, decided to jump on this, 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 uh, this virtual gathering right here and to listen to the words that are said. And we pray that the words that are shared here are in a good way, in a kind way, in a loving way, and that people walk away with something uh, different, perspective different, or they walk away from this little gathering here feeling uplifted. And so we ask that great creator to be with us in our hearts and minds today. We talk about things here. We talk about the sacredness of fatherhood and what that means for us today. We're asking for blessings uh, for, for this, this gathering here and giving thanks also for the Native Wellness Institute and all of our board members and staff and trainers that have been uh, a part of this organization for the past 20 years and creating this space here of healing for our people and all human beings. So I just wanted to say that much and honor my brothers here and those of you that are watching. The Huga. So go ahead, um, Tomas uh, or Josh, either or, just go ahead and um, tell us, uh, just do a little short introduction and, you know, give us some thoughts what's on your mind right now before we get into the discussion. Sure thing. Um, hi, my name is Tomas Carmelo Amaya. I am Ashwi and Yoeme on my mom's side and Raramuri on my dad's side. I am here in Phoenix, Arizona. This is actually where I got to meet Dosh. Um, I'm on the ancestral homelands of our Atham relatives, our Yavapai relatives, and other relatives in this desert area, and I'm grateful to be here. Um, I am uh, happily married to my partner, Sierra Begay, and we have one little baby girl. She's a year and five months now, and um, I'm just, just so happy for this conversation right now. It, it's, uh, I think, conversations that we have over time and have discussed uh, meaningful ways to gather in this way. And of course, um, organizations like the Native Wellness Institute and other uh, partners and affiliates have created spaces so that we can have these discussions. And so I just wanna express my gratitude to that. And Dosh, thank you for opening us up in such a, such a good way. And uh, um, Brother Josh, it's always good to see you. Bro, I miss you, shake a hug you. And I'm grateful for this conversation again to get started and let's get into it. Eloqua. Well, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Joshua Cocker. Uh, I'm Kaiwa on my mom's side and Tongan on my dad's side. We're here talking about fatherhood. Uh, we have an active um, fatherhood situation happening right now in the background. Um, yeah, I'm super stoked to be with you all today uh, and to be talking about this too. I feel like, man, I feel like there's so much that I didn't know. There was a couple of things that happened in our uh, lives over the past year that um, I, I believe would have happened in some way when I was younger too. You know, uh, our three-year-old um, boy last year, he was two at the time, um, was running around naked, you know, around the house and ended up pooping on all of the steps up to the house and then placed rocks in the middle of the poop. Yes, it's it's important work and it's beautiful work, but it's awesome and it's hilarious too. And I love all the things that come along with it. So I'm excited to be talking about some of these things um, and sharing some stories that hopefully aren't too, you know, embarrassing in the future for the kids when they see it, but um, just some of the good things about, you know, what we're asked to do and what we've been invited to step into. So I'm going I'm to deal with this real quick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'll pull, thank you. Uh, yeah, for those of you that um, that don't know me here, my name is Stosh Collins. I'm from the Anakamira and the Salt River people. And uh, we are existing right outside of what is now known as Phoenix, Arizona. The whole Phoenix Metropolitan Valley area is Autumn Jivika. And uh, that's on my, my paternal side. And my maternal side is uh, Haudenosaunee and Wajaji from Oklahoma. Um, also got roots that are originating from uh, Eastern Woodland there um, from my mother's side and a board member of the Native Wellness Institute and um, I'm the father of two beautiful young girls. And uh, my partner, Chelsea, is, is uh, um, from North Dakota originally and she is uh, standing on Lakota, Turtle Mountain, Chippewa. And uh, we're actually out in Minnesota right now with her family um, in, uh, in, in Anishinaabe territory. 
just visiting um, a beautiful resort here, just spending some time with family. So that's where I'm at right now. We're just gathering with family. It took, took some time to kind of travel. And this is the first time that we traveled as a family of four. And prior to the pandemic, uh, we traveled all over native country, all over Canada with myself, Chelsea and our daughter, Alo, who's three now. And, you know, we didn't travel for over a year. So we wanted to, um, you know, bring the baby out to visit her, meet her family in North Dakota, because they didn't get to meet her, only a couple of uh, members of the family. So we, that's where, that's where I'm at right now. We're visiting with our family, having a good time and enjoying this beautiful, cool weather out here, enjoying the greenery and the trees that this place has to offer. So, um, and so with our, thank you for those of you that jumped on. Um, we uh, started off right here with the words of giving of thanks and honoring all of you and honoring a lot of things in our world today. And um, we want to talk about today just reflections on just fatherhood is, is us young guys here that are part of um, Native Wellness Institute as trainers um, and, and really just shadowing a lot of our, our trainers and mentors in, in the Native Wellness Institute. We have, um, all of us are in our early years of, of fatherhood and uh, the critical, crucial developmental stages too of our, of our children. And uh, as we all are, as we are gathering, doing this role together, you know, um, it's been awesome to um, really just become into this role. Like Tomas, you know, I've known you before you were a father and, and Josh as well. And um, our brother Martin as well, you know, known you guys before you were fathers and just watching, being on this journey and watching all of you guys transform into this role and, and seeing seeing you in that. It's really awesome. It's really something to, to watch here. And um, so, I, you know, I just wanted to start off by um, by, by saying that, acknowledging that, you know, it's, it's awesome to watch us, to be in that role alongside you guys in this, this journey. And um, so I just want to ask, uh, um, kick it back over to Tomas and just um, kind of give a little bit more, um, you know, insight. What's, what's been since you, this is your second, you know, Father's Day had just passed, you know, your, yeah. um, your, your little girl uh, just to turn a year not too long ago. And what's, what's, uh, what's it been like? What's, what's some of the things that you've, um, have come to realize and that that's, that you never known before, you know, being a father. Yeah. Um, thank you, Tosh. I'd, I'd like to, to definitely do some acknowledgement here too. And, and, in, in the way of, in the way of doing that as well, or through that process, um, also hopefully answer your question. And, I just want to say that um, because you became a father before us and in, 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 in this kind of circle of our, of our um, friends and through the Native Wellness Institute, that has been meaningful for me and for our family. Um, it's certainly uh, important for us to acknowledge the individuals in our families, like um, um, those who have broken cycles in their family, who have uh, done healing work, who have put in the pr prayers, put in the thoughts. Um, so I want to acknowledge all those men and, and all those figures that have shown us uh, the, the opportunity to be, to be in this role and do it well. And I, I just want to acknowledge though, Thosh, to see you in our generation and closer to our generation, to see you do that, um, I felt like opened up a bit more confidence for me and gave me some uh, strength and, and a place to go to if I have, you know, questions or it, it just, I really appreciate you. And, and I will bring up that I, I've been following you on social media a long time before we even kind of really officially met and stuff and just seeing your kind of transformation too and becoming a father. And one of the videos that I love that you shared most recently um, has to do with this question that you asked. And the thing is that fatherhood is, it's a lot. <laughs> There's challenging moments. There's many, many challenging moments that while we prepare ourselves and, and try to use as much of our teachings and indigenous life ways to, to have balance, um, um, the, the um, flow of challenges is continuous. And so that's what I love uh, from what I see in, in, in what you do in community and what you and uh, Chelsea do is have that thought of well for culture and being well so that we're prepared and, and, and as healthy as possible to help ourselves, but to help others uh, too. So for me, um, I've, I've, been, I've been struggling in different ways with balancing um, work 
balancing uh, expectations that my partner might have for me and be, being a good partner to her and uh, being a good dad and being present for, for Hasea. And it's, um, it's something where I've, I've had to kind of uh, sit back, reflect and, and, and pray about it so that I'm, I'm really aware of the impact that I'm having on, on that sacred circle that we want to protect. And what has helped us the most, especially after the second Father's Day is really um, leaving time for conversation, uh, meaningful conversation where we can work through um, really what, what we're feeling. And I, I, it sounds a little easier uh, said than done, but um, we would try to do that growing up in my own family, but we all have different, I guess, thresholds for how much we can take in. And I've learned to respect that when we are talking to our partners and our family, um, that there's going to be different triggers and there's going to be different scenarios um, that will affect the ability to speak to each other. And so what I've learned is so, when somebody tells us that it's not the time right now, but maybe a bit later to respect that and, and um, continue the conversation, um, there is going to be uh, the urgency of moments that you need to be a father and make sure things are safe, whether it's something uh, needs fixing, um, something need, and, and that fixing could be a, a mechanical problem of some sort. Sometimes it's the, the balance, the energy that's in the room. And um, if we look at some of the ways that we are programmed through dominant culture, it's like, you know, be this big, tough person sometimes. And part of, I feel like the solution requires a more of a um, kind of stepping back and observing and allowing others around us to really lead and not feel like we always have to lead because that's the man thing to do. You know, I've become a better father. I've become a better person because I've uh, made the space and recognized the times that I really needed to step back and love Sierra, please. Like, thank you. Thank you for offering this solution. I'm ready to work with you to get it done. So I'll say that much right now so that others can speak, but it's been, it's been a, a lot of learning. Yeah, absolutely. No, for sure. I can certainly relate to all those things being said. Josh, did you want to jump on or are you busy right now? If you're busy, that's okay. We can come back. We know how it is juggling. Um, usually I have one of the babies, the girls crawling all over me right now. They're outside playing with their, their cousins and their sisters. Um, well, there he is. Did you want to go ahead and, um, Start off with any of the opening comments and reflections. Yes. <laughs> uh, all right, all right, all right. Free now, I'm free. Um, yeah, I, I agree with uh, what Tomas was saying. Uh, I had to jump out there right at the end, so I missed some of it. But, you know, like people say things, oh, nothing will prepare you for fatherhood. It's one thing to say that, nothing to experience it. And we talk about children being medicines that help us let go of things or heal families. Healing is an uncomfortable process. Um, and I feel like uh, we have like, we, we have a, well, we have a dynamic that a lot of people share. Um, Antok, our, our baby boy, uh, is not my biological son, but in every way, he's my boy. And um, so there is like growing up in two different houses, learning how to be a dad like that. And then also, to my baby girl who was born last year um it's 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 different uh and we're learning like what that means like the ways that we're able to love them um and, and how we can you know grow in unity with our family you know with all these different dynamics at play and what i've noticed and what i've learned is uh that that we get that healing that we we are able to let go of those things only after they're drawn out and so it's a real process, man. And it's kind of intense having that stuff drawn out in front of people that you love and someone, you know, you've been waiting to meet for nine months. She shows up and all of a sudden it's like all this anxiety and like stuff from my childhood of like, oh, we're not going to have enough money. Like all that stuff, man, like comes out. Um, but it's good. It's good. I think one of the blessings of being a father for uh, me, at least, is 
you know, gaining a little bit more empathy. And by that, I mean, I don't mean compassion. I mean, understanding about what it was like for my parents. Because I think about it like this time, you know, in my dad's life, he had four kids. I was like, what? <laughs> so I'm like tripping with two. So I can't even imagine. Um, and it's, it's, it's cool to be able to, to have this, this new experience and to be able to see such a long road ahead, you know, and know that it's going to go on for uh, a great while longer. And, and even when they're out of the house, it's going to go on even longer for that and start again when they have kids too. Like it's, it's kind of exciting. I was really nervous actually right before baby was born. So I, I got my uh, professional start, I guess, in construction and, and outdoor um, outdoor adventure. So it was like, uh, but when I worked in construction, I was working over in Papua New Guinea, building houses and hospitals over there. Um, so it was kind of an adventure too. And so in preparing for something that's coming, it was, it was like physical, right? So you, you get your, your bags packed, you get your tools ready, you make sure you're fit and uh, uh, ready to go for the job that's, that you're going to be asked to do. Um, but for this one, man, dude, there was a couple of sleepless nights of getting ready. Like, I don't even know what to do <laughs> and I don't even know like how long this is going to go on for um so it was cool it was cool and really exciting but I also enjoy something that that you're seeing here uh, on this live is uh healthy dads <laughs> hanging out I feel like and I use that term not to not to hold it over anyone else but the the men on this call Tosh and Tomas man they, they've been making effort and you can tell by the way that they live, um, that they try to do like genuinely the best emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and physically for their families. And that's helpful because it's, it's those kinds of friends that you want in this, you know, adventurous and daring time to, to invite you into like great things. And um, yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's, it's these dudes on the call. It's Will Penn, who you've seen on here before. Uh, is drawn from from other sources as well, like Rob and Jean and uh, Charlie when he was with us. It's just this. It's, it's a it's a great place to be in. Um, when I was growing up, that wasn't necessarily the case. You know, some of the some of the dads who my uncles <laughs> and older cousins just wasn't the case. Um, and it's not a slam or or to shame, uh, but it feels different, and I like this different. So I just wanted to, to say that those few words before. Uh, before we move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for that. <clears throat> There's a lot of things I'd love to discuss, but I want to keep it to some points right here. And one of the things that I, that I share a lot um, with people when we talk about like parenthood in general and, and just our, our journey of healing and wellness as Native people, uh, collectively, what I always think about is I think about that, you know, I, we learn about all these things before we're parents, right? In our circle, um, growing up in my community, I heard a lot of things about, you know, uh, the generations ahead of us and, and doing everything in preparation for the following generations. We hear that a lot. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, but once we are in that, that position of having to, to transfer on vital indigenous knowledge and teachings to our children and so forth, it becomes different. It, it takes on this whole other meaning because now you're feeling that. And I don't want to say pressure, but there's sort of a, a pressure there to feel that that we have that that we have sort of this uh, responsibility as native people to to heal and to break unhealthy cycles create new healthy cycles and create that that foster that space for our children for them to develop spiritually physically mentally emotionally to foster their spiritual gifts to foster their their strengths and give them that understanding of of um, how colonialism has shifted our culture today and we have to evolve as native people and, 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 and I think about all that. I think about all that stuff. And that's what fatherhood is to me. It's an opportunity to not only break those unhealthy cycles, but create those new healthy cycles. It's an opportunity to evolve to, I always say to people, as native people that it looks like throughout native country, based on my observation, my travels, what I've seen is that we are in a process of preserving, revitalizing and evolving organically evolving sometimes we're consciously evolving and part of that is our role as fathers the evolving role of indigenous fatherhood today is certainly one that i think needs to be consciously done because the colonial process has shifted our environment it has influenced our social structures it has influenced our 
the way we the way we teach, the way we parent, and there's a lot of value in a lot of things, of course, that have that, that are within the Western influence. But there is also, as we know, um, a, a time when we are restoring our practices, but we're also evolving our practices. And I say what I mean by evolving those practices is that, say, for instance, you know, oral tradition where I come from, um, amongst all of them, people talk about that 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 the up until the child was about four, they spent most of the time, you know, with their mothers. The, the mothers all were able to work in a, in, a, in a structure together. They all were able to work and take care of each other's children. You know, they were able to, 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 to uh, you know, uh, do child rearing together and helping each other with each other's children. The grandmothers had their roles in that too. Um, fathers um, were, were, you know, doing other things in, in the area and um, for instance, if there was a boy, then finally, when he was four or five, then the uncle would come in to start to uh, do things such as uh, teaching him stuff about, you know, making a bow, making an arrow, um, teaching him about hunting uh, small, small animals, wild animals, such as the, the thaw of the cottontail rabbit, or to learn to, to assist um, out in the field when it was time to grow things, you know, um, and all those sorts of roles. And, and, but as we know, our, our world has been shifted, and we... we Western influence has separated a lot of our families, uh, even on the reservation um, where I grew up in Salt River, all through the 80s and, and 90s. That our family lived in one area. We lived in all this down. We lived in this along this dirt road, but as fractionation happened to our land, and now everyone had land all over the reservation. As our families grew, everybody grew up and had their own children. Everyone just spread across the res, and then you know, so big to where we have to live in town until we can get our home built on our land and that's the process that we're at. So here we are, our little family away from town and we're sort of separated, you know, isolated from, from everyone else. And it's, it's, you have to make this conscious effort to bring the children around, you know, but we don't have that, that structure to help raise each other's children. So fathers, what I'm getting at with all this is that fathers consciously have to take in another role. And that's what a lot of us have done, you know, um, with the things that, that we're doing. And we see it, of course, in other cultures as well. Um, it's just the, the, the societal shift has this demand where the father has to step up and do things that, you know, in, that they never did in, in, in dominant culture, um, such as taking care of, um, you know, two babies and diaper changing and, um, you know, uh, creating the bottles and, and feeding the children and learning to, to nurture and learning to have, uh, you know, a level of, of just kindness and, and, and nurturing um, towards our children. Um, it's just a mode we have to, to, to take on, you know what I mean? It can be outside doing all sorts of work, or I can be flinging kettlebells in, and you have to flip this mode because the children, you know, the mama needs help because both of the children are crying and have a tantrum, and we have to flip those modes there. I mean, that's just one small example of, you know, what I'm talking about, um, but, you know, I've certainly embraced those roles of doing more house duties, uh, which I was a bachelor for a number of years, so I was already used to, like, you know, house cleaning and, you know, cooking and dishes, all this stuff, but, you know, as a dad, for me, that that those are the things that I have to do more of, in addition to all my, you know, work out on the land, like working in our family's field or getting out to hunt, um, you know, and getting out to do maintenance around the house. So I just, I just feel like there's more of a demand in, in that sense there. Um, also, um, you know, making time to be conscious about um, time for our ceremony that like we do in our home, you know, throughout the day, throughout the week and having small, small bits of, of ceremonial time where, we're teaching our daughter to, you know, be, um, you know, a sit silence for a moment or let's sing together. We do that a lot through the house. Um, you know, let's use our smudge real quick. Uh, let's give thanks for this food or let's, you know, give thanks for whatever animal we're seeing out on the land. Um, there's just so much that I feel like that has to consciously and objectively be done as an indigenous father in our world today. So I wanted to shoot it back over to either you two and just kind of speak to that. Why do you relate to that? I know I said a lot, so just feel free to kind of, you know, start anywhere. It's a lot. It's a big topic, you know, um, evolving role of fatherhood today. What is, what is that for you as a Native person? Do you mind if I jump in, Tomas? Um, yeah, one of the things that I was thinking about, man, while you're talking is like, yeah, especially in this last year when, uh, hey, Chelsea, when, when family couldn't be around or we couldn't go and see family, you know, um, that was that was really intense in terms of like, well, uh, I wanted everyone to meet my baby girl and wasn't able to go home to introduce it to our Kyle side or anything like that. So what I've seen in my family is like 
uh, an evolutionary step, man, in this last year, even this, this whole, like all my sisters, when, when they had kids, uh, everyone was around, you know, helping out, um, taking the kids, just, just wanting to, to be there. Uh, and we just weren't able to do that. And so, yeah, man, this, it was like this last year, I really feel like that statement to you home, the idea of like, oh, it's like totally on us as well as working <laughs> at home, <laughs> which can be even harder than working away from home if if the kids are at the house the whole time. I also feel like there's, I also feel like there's a necessity uh, in order for us to to evolve, um, just going on with that word, past our historical traumas as communities, because the cultural practices that are based on the principles that keep the heart safe um, are needed now more than ever, and it's only going to grow more intense. The the pressure, I think, man, you know, we were talking about this not too long ago, um, Eva and I about how they're, they're, the coming of age ceremony, like stepping um, things in order to be able to be known as, as a community member in your own space. We were discussing about how some people view those things as like special, oh, that person can do this practice. Oh, that person can speak this language. Um, and Dita mentioned it in the comments, you know, how important the power of words are in our indigenous languages. Um, that was never the case. It is not a traditional value to go to someone else for something that you are in need of. Uh, you, we are able to provide for ourselves. Uh, and when we genuinely like have that outside of our sphere of influence, then we know who to go to. That's traditional value. Um, and I, you know, and I think about like some of our, our, our practices who make us who we are, because, because everyone's, Everyone's uh, territory had unique practices. You know, out here they they built they built canoes, but we built canoes in the Pacific, and they do it totally different here. The teachings behind that, um, you know, back home, uh, horse riding. So so teaching our our children how to um, like train horses and and understand the language of what's happening as it's as it's happening to you, uh, so that you can learn from those experiences, um, and. and understand the weight of those experiences in the moment you know and truly be grateful for the medicine while you're there i feel like as indigenous fathers i've never felt man and i don't know if you guys feel the same but like the need to upskill like so hard <laughs> and try to and try to get closer to some of those practices um because I, I you know there, there's a lot of intense statistics that have to do with in developed countries when children are growing up around social media, have access to it, know how to navigate, um, but are socially unaware and, and mentally not capable of, uh, mentally not capable of like facilitating a safe like experience for themselves. These kids find themselves on some crazy sites, um, going down some weird dark holes. And at a young age, like, man, that's, that's scary. Um, and I feel like I, I know what can help that. And I believe that it is our cultural practices. I believe that it is like the wisdom of our people that's gonna keep them safe, you know, if and when those things happen. And then on top of that too, um, another thing that I, I think it's so important is the that the world at large views relationships very differently and love very differently than we do uh, in our indigenous spaces. We might say the same words in the English language, but we do not mean the same thing. Um, what I mean by that is like in uh, social media, you hear about people saying, let toxic people go, you know, practice self-care. And a real, it really feels like self-care, um, the focus on that is the individual, which is not necessarily the case. Uh, and by that, I mean this, that like to draw a breath is a gift. And I think we could all agree on that. Well, plants speak in the language of service. And so that part of their service is our teaching. When we breathe, we have to let that breath go. You can't hold on to that forever. And, and what, how we interpret that is everything that is given to us is meant to be given away. So the reason why we take those times to care for ourselves is to give that back to the community and invite others to do the same as well. Um, so, I mean, even in that like small example, there's a huge difference. And I feel like 
uh, yeah, just just being more aware of more more teachable in this space where we're supposed to be the teachers. I feel like, oh man, <laughs> I think I, I need to go back to school in a lot of ways to uh, to gather some information to help um, make sure that we're really doing things in a good way. Um, I also I also think that uh, there's a lot of exciting things happening right now um, in terms of like our cultural evolution uh, and personal evolutions, family evolutions. Um, Oklahoma is kind of a difficult, difficult place for a lot of the tribes. There's a lot of good things that happen there. There's a lot of hard things that happen there. Uh, one thing that I, I grew up with in, in, within Oklahoma is there was a small group of hunters where I grew up. Um, and that was a little unfortunate. And so those who were hunters were like super cool. The reason why I say that's unfortunate is because now I'm hunting. I want everyone to have this experience. And I feel like part of the evolution is uh, bringing some of those back, that revitalization that Thosh was talking about. We uh, haven't gotten to the point where we're able to hunt, but baby boy has been able to come scouting with us. And we, uh, we were able to set traps because you can be loud and noisy <laughs> when we're doing that. And so um, during those times, it's, and, and making fire together too, it's uh, just for fun now, but what he's going to grow up knowing is that when I'm with my dad um, and it's springtime, we go outside and we do these things. And that's exciting. That is exciting. And I hope that, um, you know, if, if, if we haven't felt that inspiration from our, our, our communities or, or, or found that yet, man, like, let's start doing that as Indigenous dads. Let's, let's make those things happen. Let's be those people. And, and that way, the, the power of our ancestors is not something that we talk about as uh, you know, some distant memory, but something that's happening right now. And um, yeah, that's just, <laughs> God, I've touched on a few things there, but I hope that made sense. <laughs> I'll pass it, it to- made, it made absolute sense. Um, I, I love both of you. And like you were saying, Josh, uh, we might say that in English, but what I'm really saying is, I will hunt and eat, give you each a whole deer and I'll help you build your new house. That's what I'm trying to say. Just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Like but not, I will help you. I think we touched upon a lot of incredible things right now. And as both of you were speaking, it made me, it made me think of the moments I've shared with each of you in different settings. Um, Thosh, I've been able to live out moments more with you because we live, you know, geographically we're closer. And uh, you had a baby before uh, Josh and I, um, but, in these lived moments, I've really felt that we're we're creating patterns that are uh, positive, that are um, going to have lasting effects way beyond our time. And I wanted to point out that there's a recent memory where I was with Sierra and our baby, and we went to Martin and Kahara's house, and Dosh and Chelsea were there, and we all had our kids. We were all having a good time and barbecuing. Um, and Martin was inside cooking and I was helping him cook. And um, I think um, the, uh, matriarchs were outside in the pool and splashing around with the kids. And Thashi were out there as well with one of the babies. And that whole day just lives in my recent memory as this just beautiful time because it's something that we dreamt about. And we came inside and we even started playing guitar and we all like jammed out and we were dancing and being silly and being vulnerable. And a lot of those things were never necessarily broadcast or recorded. And why I wanna say that is as we're creating real change in our communities and creating these spaces, um, it's those daily moments of of those interactions that build upon and build upon. And our children feel that, they have that memory in their hearts and in their bodies. They, they, they might not remember exactly in a way that, uh, let's say science wants to tell us as we know it, you know, Western science, but there's a memory to that. And every day that we reach those moments is such a beautiful thing. And, and I am grateful for that. And I want to point out that there is the distinction between things that are performative and things that are not. Unfortunately, as we talk about toxic masculinity, sometimes we found out 
and were hurt by the fact that some of those people that we thought were great examples were just being performative and that hurts. So what happens there? But what I hear from Josh and what I hear from Tosh that rhymes, it's excellent, it's great, is there's always room. There's always, always room for empathy and going back to that, having a special, being special people. I, yeah, Dosh and Josh, you are special to me. Your families are special to me. Will, you are special to me. Martin, you're special to me. Are we exceedingly special people? Well, I think yes, in different definitions to our own families and to our groups, but I think we're like, we're basically creating this space so that um, we don't feel uncomfortable feeling healthy. And if we're able to, if you are a person that's able to be grateful and just like Dosh was showing that gratitude, that goes such a long way for all of us to operate from that space, to live from that space of gratitude. And then the, I think the idea is that, yes, we're all special because we're, we're putting these things into practice, but I, it, we want it to be a norm, right? So if we want something to be a norm, then it's not special anymore. That's okay. Like, it's all good. Like, let's make something else special that we need for our families and work on that next thing while we have other people who have built that muscle memory to keep things going. Like, that's exactly where it's at. Like, I, I want, when I think of being in a room with Tosh, Josh, Martin, and, and, and other young fathers, indigenous fathers, I don't want to close that circle and say, no one else in. We, we already got it. We're healed. We get it. That's, that's like gatekeeping. And I've often thought about this as like, we often romanticize somebody that struggles in their life and almost enable it to continue because that we, because we might think that those tough experiences, while they do make you tougher and make you learn a lot of things, um, they create better art or they give you a better story. And I think that could be problematic and that that's kind of a, a different segue topic. But why I bring that up is like, I want to dream of a time where my homies are healed and could be there for their families and where we bring in other homies so they can heal and so on and so forth. And I know that it's an infinite cycle. This universe is in constant healing from a, from a cellular level, microscopic level to, you know, our stars and beyond. And so looking at that balance, I, it's, it's kind of a stepping back and saying, you know, because this is cyclical and traumas will continue to happen. I just want to be part of that movement where we're bringing more people in and not shutting people out like you said, Dosh, there's people that say, kick toxic people up. We have the same native wellness where, no, call them in. Don't call them out. Call them in. Just change that one word. And it, there's empathy. There's gratitude. And so those are just a couple of thoughts. And, and, and again, I'm, I, I'm just uh, really happy to be here because these are things that we sometimes talk about in passing and in moments. And we have busy lives, but being very intentional about it right now is, is very important and, and I'm, I'm glad it gets to stay here too. So we can always take more from it, always learn from it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. You said a lot of, you said a lot of things right there too, that for sure that really resonated with me and bringing up that, that little gathering that we had with, you know, Martin and Kahara and, um, you know, all of our children together. And it's just, you know, that's certain, like you can tell all of us really absorbing that. And um, again, like what you said, it's, it's conscious and it's intentional and what, the faith that the space that we're fostering the children with everything is done you know with intention and where you see the importance um of of extended family and community and that's one of our circles of wellness there is that it, belonging to a larger network outside of just our family outside of our community our clan but we have we have that extended family right there and for the children to all grow up during that and we're creating that that safe space and it's a healthy space like what you said you know not feeling um not feeling, um, you know, ashamed to be healthy because that was some of the things that that we have grown up seeing, you know, in in our communities. Um, you know, we didn't grow up in a lot of ways that, um, where, 
being in a healthy way, walking in a good way from the heart and the mind was something that was the norm all the time, right? So we're bringing that into that. So, I mean, that's the biggest thing that I always kind of go back to when, I, when I'm thinking about, um, you know, indigenous fatherhood today is, is, like I was saying earlier, it's just this being so conscious about every day everything that we're bringing into to their lives is specifically done, you know, for, for a reason. And it's, it's thought out, it's well thought out in that sense. And um, like I said before too, that it's an opportunity for us to create those new healthy cycles and, and not just re revitalize and preserve things, but bringing new things in and evolving, giving our, our, our giving, uh, I guess, space to ceremony that's relevant today. Um, like for instance, within our little family, one of the things that we wanted to honor in a ceremonial way was the baby's first uh, food, aside from the food that they're coming getting from their mama. And so, with our our six month old Weston, she was in there kind of just um sounding fussy. That's why I had to peek in there to see if they wanted me to give, grab her. But <clears throat> with her first uh, solid ceremony, we gave her the the bone broth uh, from uh, venison one of the venison bone broth and um and that was done intentionally like when i went out to hunt and harvest that that deer um towards the end of the season right there we were saving the bones because we knew that here around five or six months is we're going to introduce something uh a, a food from outside of what she gets from her mama but something from the land because for myself it's binding that child more to the land just like we do with the the placenta bearing um and continuing that and um I had that for, for when I was born that my mom and dad had put put um, mine out there on, on, on the land over at our one of our special areas on in Salt River. And that's what's kept me binded to the land. But it's also when I found out about that growing up, that's what really made me feel special in that sense. It made me feel like I was a, a part of something. And that's what we all want as human beings. So for us to continue that, um, within our little family, for me, we just made it, Chelsea and I both so proud and happy. And, and we were also given another piece of advice as we started going and talking to different knowledge keepers and elders around the community. We're trying to find as much as we could to put together to develop our, our teachings um, for parenthood. And one of our other um, knowledge keepers told us, they said that, well, you, 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 would, you can also put their placenta there and that right there on your family's land where you are going to reside. So we put it in a special place there near some other things. So we were able to do that. So that's another number one for binding the child to the land um, and, and, and aligning them with where they come from, the importance of being home and being a part of that community the, and the, the confidence that will foster um, from there forward. So we started that. And then we also, all at them way, they have a clay eating ceremony that they do for the child. Um, and then with our little family is that what we created, what we gave our self permission, I would say, to do in a ceremony, a way to make tradition in our family is to honor that baby's first food by buy something from the land as well. Aloes, when she um, first tried uh, solids was squash that uh, she, she had helped actually plant on our family's lot where we plant, you know, the corn and the melons and stuff and the hide of squash. And uh, Aloe helped plant that she's a few months. So when some when it grew, that was some of the first foods that she was able to try. Um, and then so with, with Weston, we wanted it to be another type of food from the land right there. So, for, I mean, for me to be able to, to foster that and create that for my children, to me, it's just like, that's, a, that's, that's honor. That's honorable. That's one of the most special things I could do is to, is to set their paths forward, you know, in those, in those good ways so they always have those bindings. But that's just one of the examples of what I'm talking about when I talk about in, within families, especially families that we come from different nations within our families. A lot of us are already multiple nations to begin with. Then we marry and have children with other people that are, have multiple nations too. So we have all this background roots and teachings and protocols. And we, it's sort of our job to, and it's, we, we have that power ourselves to pull it together and develop your own family's culture. Your, your, your home life, your kia dog, your way of life that you live at home to develop that for yourself, what works for you and your children. And so for me, that's a largely what my, my parenthood journey is about. Fatherhood journey is, is pulling that together and helping to foster that space alongside, you know, Chelsea, who also does that. She has lots of things coming to her. But that's where our personal healing and wellness journeys come in, I believe, 
is because when we are in that space, when we are trying to operate from a good mind and good heart, you know, we're, 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 we're moving our bodies, we're trying to be in a ceremonial way, we're not uh, using substances, um, you know, we're not eating unhealthy foods or engaging too much in dominant culture thinking and behavior, that when we, that's where the consciousness opens up and then we start receiving that information about about this is how you can do it. You can do it in this way, you can do it in that way. And that's the way you would go about it in a ceremonial way because again, it's, it's, it's responding to the demand of, of, of walking in a good way while navigating this, this world, the, the colonial world that is continuing to persist today, I think is, is a big thing. And for me, that's what um, you know, my role is within my, my parenthood. And that's why everything is like we talked about, everything is done very specifically and thought out and, and, and you know um we're conscious and objective about it you know it's not always perfect you know there's a lot of times where i get lazy as a parent i get lazy and i'll say oh sure go ahead you can you know watch your little show or you can you know do this and that why i do something like work out or something like that you know it's not perfect you know for sure we're, we're learning to certainly navigate through that but um we're coming at the end of it so i want to pass it back to uh, josh and just kind of you know let you share any any other last uh, comments before we end here in about six, seven minutes? For sure, for sure. Um, the, the only thing that I, I wanna say to, to everyone uh, who's watching in, friends and mentors and um, you beautiful men on this call. Uh, I, I, I love that Tomas brought up the fact that this shouldn't be something that's that's brand new, uh, or or feels different. Um, we're we're indigenous people, and we we come from powerful lineage. Uh, when we say things, you know, on on our power hours, uh, or you hear things in your community where the the teachings of the land come out, like Dosh was talking about, you you start to understand. Holy crap! I, they mean like the world lives for me yeah like literally breathes for you as an individual uh and every other person who's breathing it's chosen their purpose to be its success as well and by it i mean the land our first mother so um let's keep that in mind let's keep that in mind let's not settle for less let's uh let's help our communities out and let's let's be the difference that we need and we do need it so Thank you for joining us. Um, thank you, Tosh and, and Tomas, for letting me hop on with you guys. I'll pass it to Tomas. Thank you. Thank you, Josh, and thank you, Tosh, again. Um, the way that you put those ideas together and, and um, both of you, where you use applied, like where you use real world experience, you bring um, our indigenous you know, baskets of knowledge, you do your own reading, you know, listen to your own type of music. All of that is is really important, and I love how you you bring it together. Um, so thank you for that. And I want to say uh, happy birthday to my wife, Sierra. I cannot go uh, throughout this whole power hour and not say that um, it's her birthday, her her trip around the sun, and um, truly, I I wouldn't be the father that I, that I am without her in 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 my life not from a very literal sense but just the the lessons i've learned through the, through the pregnancy and the lessons i've learned through after the pregnancy or before you know during and after and so happy birthday to you my love to sierra begay i i'm really grateful for you and and one more thing on gratitude and that's how i'd like to close out my part is uh one thing that we put into practice is being grateful right and I'll say what's one thing you're grateful for and um i've had some allergies and a head cold recently i was so scared that i had covid because i lost my sense of smell and one thing that i'm grateful for um is just my sense of smell and i, I hope it returns because one of the first things that i missed from not smelling is smelling our little babies the baby smell and it just it's something that you don't forget and um, it made me think back to like what it means. Um, I was also out on the land this morning, right around sunrise, and I could barely smell it, but I almost couldn't smell the greasewood, the shigoi, as some of our 
our Atom relatives say it, and, or as they say, Atosh, you can correct me, please. But Shigoy? Is it Shigoy? Shigoy. Yeah. Shigoy. 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 Oh, yeah, you said it. That, that, that smell is so powerful. It reminds me of home, this home that it is right now, that where I was raised. And I know I'm a, a guest and a relative. But just the, the smell and those memories, we'll find that as fathers, there's going to be things that will bring up such a densely packed set of emotions. And I, I hold on to that in a very dear way. So um, love you all who's, who are watching. Love all the families, love everyone that's participated. And, and, and thank you so much for having me on here. Yeah, thanks, you guys, for jumping on and sharing. Thanks, thanks Namas, for sharing your heart there. Yeah, I look forward to smelling the shugoi, the, the smell of the, the grease wood and the rain, for sure. That's something we haven't got much of since uh, we've been in that drought, but say hi, say hello. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we're uh, expressing our, our, our gratitude too for, for Sierra. It's her special day, so happy birthday to Sierra. It's Auntie, Auntie Sierra's birthday today. Yeah. Um, yeah, so again, yeah, thank, thanks everyone for coming on here and spending some time with us uh, this past hour, everyone that's um, joining us right here live. Um, you know, there's a lot to talk about for sure with this topic and can never be summed up in one hour for sure. So someone said, oh, this needs to be a series. I mean, absolutely. I think we've had lots of other, um, you know, fathers on before and talking about this, these topics as well. And it's a big topic that we need to continue to um, be objective about native country and talk about this involving the role of, of fatherhood and uh, healing for for fathers and those that you know identify as fathers and healing for that um you know for our children and that's really really what it's all about right of course everything we're doing is yeah it's for our children so thanks everyone for joining us in um this conversation and uh, we look forward to more in the future so i want to thank you all and i want to give thanks to all of the fathers out there that are that are doing their roles and, and honoring that role as father and evolving that role as well and taking on that that objective role as a, as a native father today and you know and, and i encourage them all to continue to to share that and continue to gather in your men's circles and continue to have an open mind and open heart um about um how our, our role continues to evolve in our world today huh <laughs> yeah so i just wanted to say that much and uh, thank you two fellows and i look forward to seeing you guys here in a, what another week yeah all right we look forward to it all right, take care, everyone.